everyone, I'm Jason Peacock. Today, we're taking a look at Bunny Kingdoms from Yellow Games, designed by acclaimed designer Richard Garfield, who designed the most successful game in the history of civilization, Magic the Gathering. So this is a pure card drafting game with some uh, territory placement. The idea is you're trying to draft cards that lets you put your bunny figures in territories that are connected to each other. You're going to do four rounds of drafting. At the end, you're going to score based on the number of different buildings in your little kingdom, which is all connected orthogonally places you control, squares that you control, times the number of different resources. So let me give you an overview of how it plays, and then I'll let you know what I think. There's the starting setup of the game. You'll notice these buildings on the board. Each of these little city spaces will start with a tower on the board. You'll notice this massive deck of cards. 100 of these cards is go going to correspond with a grid space. So there's going to be an A1 to 10 all the way to J1 to 10. C1, J8, H3. So 100 cards will correspond with the map. The game is going to be played over four rounds and depending on the player count, if you look down here, you're going to be drafting either 10 cards or 12. And once all the cards are drafted, then there's going to be a scoring round. So let me continue about the cards. So like I said, 100 cards of that deck corresponds with each space on the grid. And each space on the grid has a little some of the spaces on the grid, I should say, have a little symbol like either wood or fish or carrots. And there's other resources that can be produced um, with certain buildings you're going to play. And I'll talk about that in a second. The rest of the cards are going to be these scroll cards here with the little scroll border. When you draft these, they get played face down in front of you and they don't resolve until the end of the game. I'm going to talk mostly about these scroll cards in my final thoughts, but they give you certain objectives to go for, like um, one point for every carrot that you produce, uh, one point or two points for each corner space on the grid that you control, and there's a ton of these. The other kind of cards you're going to get are building cards, and they are going to give you either a level one, two, or three building. The uh, number of spires is the level of the building. Level three buildings can only be made on mountains here. But that's important buildings because with each scoring round, you're going to score points based on the number of towers times the number of resources in a fief you control. And a fief is like a kingdom. It's a number of adjacent squares that you have. So if we're drafting and I play this J5 card, then I'll throw a little rabbit onto J5. Right there. And the card gives me a reminder of what that space actually produces. And then when you're done, it goes into your own personal discard pile. Now say at the end of the scoring round, I control something like this. So you're going to score each fief, and it's going to be the number of towers times the number of different resources. So I've got one tower here, and I've got a carrot and a fish. Even though I have four fish, I still only have two different resources. So this fief would score me two points. There's different kinds of buildings. There's just um, like this here would be a level one building, a one spire building, and you can put that in any territory you control. There is also a level two building. And then there's special buildings that produce resources or other special things. Like this one here is a sky tower. You put this little sky tower marking on two different fiefs and that would join them up. Camps are a type of building. You would place a little camp icon right there on the little square of your, uh, wherever you're putting the camp down. And what a camp lets you do is take control of a place that you don't necessarily own. Like So if nobody's played an F, uh, four, I could put a camp there, and you're never allowed more than one of any type of building. 
Um, and that place is yours until someone plays the actual card where that camp goes, and then your camp is gone. And then there's buildings like this, um, an ore mine. This lets you put down the corresponding resource on the corner, and that is a new kind of resource you're producing now. If it's got a little uh, pitcher next to the uh, um, next to the type of resource it produces, that's a requirement. So this can only be produced in a mountain range. So there are all kinds of different resources and different buildings from the cards, and. Uh, Certain cards will let you play certain buildings. When you do play a building card, you leave it in front of you until after all the drafting is done. And then everybody can claim buildings on territories they control. The last type of card are these provision cards. It simply lets you draw two cards off the top of the deck. So that's the game right there in its entirety. I'm sure there's more specifics with um, some of the different kinds of buildings and whatnot. But you are grabbing a card, passing your deck off to the next player, and doing four rounds of drafting, and hoping at the end of the game, you have the final score. Let's go back up, and I'll give you my thoughts on the game. So that was Buddy Kingdom. Let me start with what I don't like about the game. My biggest problem is that the board is tiny. Like, look at how much space this board takes up in an average game box. Because the board's so small, by the end of the game, everything's so cramped. Um, it's a little bit tricky to like score everything just because you're like, oh, did I count this FIFA already? And sure, you, you try and start at one and work your way down and up, but it's just a lot of information crammed into a little tiny board. And I think the game would be I would like the game even more if it was on a bigger board. And if yellow ever produces one of those uh, neoprene mats with bigger squares, I'd probably be all over it. Okay, so that's out of the way. The, let's start with the components. Uh, the bunny figures is a nice touch. It's awesome. Um, in fact, some some friends of mine were turned off by this uh, this bunny theme, but I thought Watership Down and I was excited about the theme. So I love the little bunny figures. The uh, the little buildings that they sit in is great. The cardstock of like all the other kinds of buildings is really thick cardstock. The card quality is good. And I mean, it would be nice to sleeve this game, but the deck could be this big with them all sleeved and I don't think I'm gonna bother. Glad they're white edges and not black because black edge cards uh, scratch really easy and it's not too long before you can identify the backs of cards by certain scratch marks. So I'm a huge fan of drafting. Blood Rage is 70-80% is drafting and that's my favorite game. So I love that you could tailor your own strategy based on the decisions of the cards you're going to pick. So, as far as a pure drafting game goes, this is one of my favorites. I, if it's between this and Seven Wonders, I'm more likely to pull up Buddy Kingdom, I think. So, like drafting games, the decisions you make are really the, like, the lifeblood of this game. Do you take a card that's going to benefit you or do you take a card that you know is going to benefit someone else? Maybe you're going to do that and just hope that other card you want comes back around to you. Also, the two-player variant where you have, you're drafting 12 cards, but you also have a side deck. So every time you draft, everybody's picking up a blind card off, a, off another deck. Plays really good. So this is a solid two-player drafting game. Really good. I was impressed by how good the two-player was. Now, the drafting aside, the drafting is great, but what really makes this game for me, what escalates it above a game like Seven Wonders, is the, um, the scroll cards that you can pick and keep face down to the end of the game. I love that aspect of the game. Oh, okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get two points for every territory with a carrot I control. I'm definitely keeping this to the end of the game. And it's a really nice balance between 
just concentrating on end game points based on these scroll cards that you're taking and another player that's just racking up the points throughout the game by having really nice fiefs with different resources and stuff like that. I played a game where I was behind like 50 points and the, uh, the scroll card draft and I did, it didn't win me the game but it brought me way closer than I expected I could get. So that's the cream of the crop and that's what sets this drafting game apart from other ones. I love being able to pick your own uh, strategies for end game scoring and there's a ton of those cards in there. Lots of different kinds. So to sum up, the decisions in this game are awesome, like drafting games. And those just the more experienced you are at this game, the more the more that spectrum of decisions will grow. The game plays in a really good amount of time too. Like we're talking 30 to 40 minutes. However, because there's so many big decisions, AP could be a factor. It never really factored into me or the groups I played it with. But if you're the type of person that just has to analyze every single one of those 12 cards and what the mathematically best decision for you to do is, th uh, that might drag the game out. So th that is a possibility. And the end game scoring is a, or sorry, the, uh, the end of round scoring is a bit mathy. They even include a multiplication table if math isn't your strong suit. So with a small board, um, you know, you're like, okay, uh, six times 13. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of math with the adding score, so that might turn some players off as well. But if you can handle that, if you like drafting, if you like buddies trying to make kingdoms, you might really like this game. So for me personally, if you like a drafting game, I definitely recommend this. It, um, it fared pretty, pretty high with uh, the, the different groups I played with. Um, from loving it to, eh, it was okay, I'd play it again. But nobody disliked it. Really wish they had a bigger board. So um, that's Bunny Kingdom. Check me out on social media right here and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.